Alright, so uh, I'm going to show you how to do the startup procedure and also set up your route in the FMC in the Zebo 737 in x -Plane 11. So first of all, what you need to do here to turn the all the power on is is that uh, you come up here, this is the uh, power section, you need to close the safeguard which turns the battery on. Boom! So now we have the battery, uh, or not battery, but the whole aircraft is now powered up. Now, these are the emergency engine lights. Now we just need to arm them by closing the guard. So we just close that. Now, what you need to do is that you need to turn on the probe heat, basically airspeed indicator, how your airspeed indicator works. So put that on so that doesn't freeze up. I like to do this. This is just my way of uh, starting up. So now we turn all the hydraulics on. The engine ones are already on. Electrics are not. So turn the electrics on. Now we need to get some power in this aircraft. So we need to first turn all fuel pumps on. So these four are the main ones. And then if you need more fuel, you're going to have some in the center. You're going to have some in the center tank. So we can go rain right balance. And so as you can see, we have a, we have, let's just set all to here. So we have left, center, and right. So all of our tanks have fuel, so we're going to be wanting to turn all of those on. Now, we're going to switch the APU on to, to the on position. Now we're going to hold it to the start position for about five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now it's going to start up. So to start the engine, you're going to need to put the APU bleed on. So let me show you this. This is going to be your... These two panels right here are your pressurization. This is the air conditioning. So first of all, you want to put the isolation valve to auto. Then the packs, uh, you can keep them off. Recirculating fans can come off. Just a note, and also we're going to put the APU bleed on right there. Uh, just be advised that the, the packs are the air conditioning and the recirculation fans are part of that. So you can keep them on, but Right before you start the engines, you need to take it off so that the engines have as much uh, pressure uh, as I need to start. Okay, now, this uh, come down to this panel. So this is the flight altitude. Keeps everyone from getting hypoxia. So let's say we're only going to be cruising at 10,000 for some reason. You put it there. Let's say the landing altitude. So landing altitude is basically the altitude of the airport that you're landing at. So let's just say it's 100 feet. So if you have a... Um, an airport height of uh, uh, 122 feet, then you're just going to put 100, just round down to the nearest 100, or round down to the nearest uh, 50, I guess. So if it's 122, you're not going to go to 150, you're going to go to 100. Okay, now uh, switch this engine start panel. So here, just switch it back to both the center position. Now just turn on your lights. Okay. Now, turn your anti-ice right, anti-ice on there. Okay. Now, um, as you can see, we do not have the IRS aligned. Basically, you cannot see anything except for your altitude and speed. Obviously, we need all those maps and everything. So, what we're gonna go? What we're gonna do? We're gonna go to the IRS panel, which is this uh, section. We're gonna switch both of these to nav. So, uh, for now, we should keep those off. Do not follow these steps. Um, because we need to get the APU up and running. Oh, and now it's on. So what we can do? Switch the two center switches on to turn the APU on. Now we can go here to put these on the nav position. So once both are on DC lights extinguish and the line appears, then you're all set. Um, so now we're gonna go over to the FMC here. So it says enter IRS heading, I'll show you how to do that. So you, this is the main feature of the FMC. Click FMC. Click position in it. Then, uh, I'm at uh, Boston uh, International, so I'm going to do K, Kilo, Bravo, uh, Oscar, Sierra for the airport code. Put it in reference airport, ref airport. Now, you want to take the uh, ref airport, you want to click this one on the right to get that location then click here so this is going to take a while so what I recommend if you have the Zebo like the full edition of the Zebo is go to settings on the tablet go to realism settings change the line to short uh, also we're just going to close this door here um, 
we're gonna have to reset these because uh, that setting, the the short setting for the IRS, only takes a f in effect when you reset the IRS. So we're gonna go back down here and repeat. By the way, um, as you saw, I repeated the IRS align process. Do not do that. I just forgot to put the um, the the uh, setting to quick align on. Now we're gonna go to route. So we're so because we entered the reference airport on the previous page, the init ref page. You could ju it will be in your scratch pad, which is this little this little thing where you can type things in and then it's not really saved. Click that to origin. And let's say I want to go to Memphis. So kilo uh, mic echo mic. Click that on the destination. Now this is not required, but I'm gonna put my uh, call sign. I'm just making this up. American Airlines uh, 290. Go here. Now pref in it. So this is starting your um, take. Oh, now you see your IRS is aligned. You see everything. Um, so at this point, now we need to calculate. Uh, what speed we need to be going for takeoff. So just click here to get that. And now your flight level, let's say we're going to be at flight level 330. Click it there. These are really for virtual airlines and real airlines, so you can leave that alone. You can insert it, but it doesn't really matter. Go to N1 limit, just click this, it will give you all this information, temperatures and all such. Now go here. So what I recommend is going to. Why well, are my flaps already extended? Um going to at least uh, 5 flaps. I'd like to go 10. So insert 10 flaps here. Now to get the uh, speeds, just click these three buttons. Now you have your V1, 133, VR for rotate, 135, and V2 is 146. Now you can click departure, but I like to click this, departure and arrival. So these will uh, give you the departure and arrival SIDS. So we're going to be departing from uh, Blazer 3 departure. And now we'd like to go on the 2 2 right. Now we're going to click route and we're going to click activate. Now we need to execute it so it saves. Okay, now we need to go to legs. And now you see blazer. Um, so now what you need to do, well, all these SIDs will be from uh, flight planning software. Of course, you can do it from direct you can do direct but if you're flying on Vatsim or something they're gonna make you do the preferred route so I'm gonna go over to Vatsim on my other screen you won't be able to see this and I'm gonna make a flight plan real quick I already have one safe so I'm just gonna load that up so my flight plan reads blazer 3 so uh, we inserted blazer 3 if you can remember from the departure arrival uh, now it wants us to put blazer so that's already there now we have uh, Bravo Alpha Fox Trot, so B A F. Now where do we put the SID? Put it right there. Boom. Uh, you can insert uh, things for VNAV. I personally don't like doing that. Um, <coughs> um, so now we have some airways. I I don't know how to deal with airways. I don't think you do the airways. It automatically puts it in once you execute everything, so that's how that works. So you skip the airways like uh, Quebec 406. So after that airway, we have uh, Bravo Whiskey Zulu. So PWZ, PWZ. Insert it like you did with uh, Bravo Alpha Foxtrot. Now uh, we have another airway, Juliet 6. We're gonna skip that. Now we're gonna go to the next it's our star, which is Bravo Whiskey. Golf, so BWG, BWG, insert that here, and now, now we're at the depart or arrival SID, so we're going to press execute on that so it saves. Now we're going to go back to departure and arrival, so now we have uh, Memphis, we need to go to the arrival of Memphis, and my flight planning software, Simbrief, Simbrief.com, just by the way, uh, it says Blazer, or Blaze 1, whatever you pronounce it, so I'm going to select that here. Now, uh, for the transition, that's the basically the SID or star right before um, this star, the uh, arrival. So right before Blaz One, we have Bravo Whiskey Golf. So we're gonna choose that as a transition. So now this is up to your flight planning software or whatever the air traffic controller, if you're on Vatsim or Pilot Edge, uh, decides for the ATIS. So here I'm just gonna say ILS zero niner. So now we can press. Execute on that. 
now you have your FMC set up. So now you want to loop through this by going through previous and next page. Keep going, keep going. So you notice something called a vector. So the vector means that the, the air traffic controller or whoever, you know, you know, even if you have AI, they will direct you to uh, Buddy. So uh, you would select Buddy, you copy Buddy by clicking that button right here, and then you can override vector by clicking that. And now we're going to keep going. And we have no discontinuities. If we have any discontinuities, there will be a bunch of little boxes, and then it will say discontinuity. And if that happens, let's say uh, instead of Buddy, it was a discontinuity. You would copy phallic, phallix, and you would put phallix right here where the discontinuity would be. Okay, nice. So now you have your MC setup. So now, just to check that it looks good directional wise, we go over here, select this to plan. Now we can go to FMC and step. So it will bring you throughout your route, and that looks pretty good. Perfect. And it looks like we're going to be in a hold uh, right before we uh, land. Okay, good. So now, I'm going to come over to my tablet here. You might not have it. You can use uh, the plugins, but I'm just going to use the tablet. So we're going to go to Ground Services, Better Pushback, Pre-Plan, and I already selected this. Uh, I'm not going to teach you how to use uh, uh, the software, this plugin. So now we're just going to press Enter. Alright, so we said uh, call me through the menu when you're ready, so we're going to press Request Pushback. So it freezes up a little bit here. Alright, our tow is uh, coming up. Cool. Also, uh, before you depart, uh, I'm not sure why that's there. Um, when you, before you depart, I like to do it before pushback. Just make sure your flaps are set to whatever flap setting you have them to. Make sure they extend. Make sure your hydraulics are on by checking that uh, the flaps extend. If not, go ahead and check this panel. Make sure everything's on. Okay. Now we're just waiting for our uh, for our truck, for our pushback truck to come here. Also, you need to set your auto brake to rejected takeoff RTO in the case that you actually uh, in the case that you. Um, have a rejected takeoff for some reason. It will auto break. Also, we're just going to do a quick test here. We're going to test the fire system so that we know that you know the the sounds and everything are working. So that if there's a fire, it does show us that there is a fire. So now we're going to move this to the right. Hold it. Okay. Sound and lights have gone off. Now put that back. Now we go over here. All right, perfect. So that is working. That's a very important step so that, you know, you don't have flames coming out the back of your engine and you don't know it because it doesn't alarm. All right, we got the okay to release the parking brake, so we just release the parking brake by clicking that handle. Okay, he just said we're going to start pushback and we're going to, we can start engines. So now what you need to do, remember, if you didn't do this, if you didn't do this panel, what I went through in the beginning, you need to do it now or else the engines will start properly. Recirculation fans set to off, left and right. Left pack off, right pack should be off. Isolation valve auto. Um, engine 1, 2, and APU bleed should be on. We're set to the down position. Now we're going to actually start the engines. So we have this little panel here right near the lights. So I'm going to start uh, engine number one first. So I'm going to set this to the GRD position, which means ground position. So as you can see, the N2 is rising. Once it hits 20, we're going to add the fuel. So 20 is there. This is the fuel. Bring it all the way up to idle. Now we're going to wait for this uh, little switch to go back to auto. It will automatically go back. Do not touch it. All right, that's we have a good start on engine number one. Okay, that has uh, extinguished or gone back to auto. Now we're going to put this one to ground. Alright, 
so let's just check oh and I forgot to do that so let's just add that fuel Now that engine is started up, so just an overview, if you have a catastrophic failure during a flight and you need to um, restart your engine mid-flight, uh, I'm not sure the altitude that you have to be at, but what you have to do, this is for ground, this is just auto. Alright, we're going to set the parking brake, he's all done. Now, um, alright, now, uh, continuous is just right after, so... You don't have to do it, I don't do it. It doesn't extinguish for me, I'm not sure why, but whatever. Also, this is flight, so if you're mid-flight and you need to restart the engine, you can put it over to flight can, uh, position. Do not put it to ground, it won't work properly. Okay. Alright. Now, we can get the air conditioning back up. So let's say, we're going to disconnect that. So left pack and right pack should be auto. Now we're going to turn off the APU bleed. Turn on both recirculating fans. At this point, we don't want to just sh shut the APU off yet. We are going to connect the uh, generators. Basically, the engines are powering this plane now. So click the right one, click the left one. Now the APU, this light should extinct or er, should go off. So this says APU Gen Off Bus, so that's good, that means it's uh, not connected anymore. Now we're going to switch the APU to off, make sure that extinguish, that shows uh, that it's, uh, that the APU is off. Now we're going to turn taxi light off, and uh, yeah, now you have your, now you have your plane all set up. Uh, also, I'm going to do a quick demonstration on the autopilot, I'm not actually going to go and fly it right now. So we're going to go to uh, this autopilot uh, section. So now we're going to have to turn full, both flight directors on. Also make sure you do this right before takeoff or before takeoff. Now, let's say I wanted to keep a climb speed of uh, 210 knots. We would say auto throttle arm. Boom, put that up. Now, we're going to want the LNAV. LNAV will follow your, er, follow your flight plan as you did in the FMC. So we're going to select that. And uh, because I'm on the ground, it's not. It doesn't want to do that. But let me just show you. So you would click L nav once you're in the air. Click L nav. Then let's just say. So remember, we put the 10,000 in the uh, pressurization panel. So 10,000 is our flight altitude, and I did 11,000 by accident. Boom. Now let's just say I want to climb at vertical speed of 1100 so I would set that uh, basically what this would do you would put it on vertical speed and it would climb to that altitude and level off so here what you would do is you would click speed and it will start rising because we're on the ground I'm going to shut it off you know what I'll keep it on so we have speed on then we're going to click L nav and we're going to click vertical speed and we're going to press CMD. Basically, that will uh, that will um, that will basically follow your flight plan. So yeah. Also, we have a takeoff config. Oh, there we go. Um, so also, uh, if you want to do an ILS approach like we selected, you have to set that up. So I like to come over to here. You can also look this up. I like to go to AVI tab. Uh, you know, this is another plugin that you need to have installed. So now, go to airport. Now we're going to arrive at ca uh, Memphis. So type that uh, that uh, code in. So press enter. Now scroll down. Now we're landing on runway 09er as we said in the arrival. So now the course is 94 degrees so the course basically helps uh, makes it so that you can align with the ILS so what was it again I think it was 95 94 okay 94 so we're gonna set this course to 94 okay and also this course both you need to do both that's very important okay 94 okay perfect now you have to get on the frequencies uh, of the ILS. 
So it's going to be uh, 109.5 frequency, uh, 109.5. So we're going to come over here, nav 1 and nav 2. So this is your navigation ILS panel, basically. So let's come over here, let's double check. 109.5, so we're going to do this. 109.5, we're going to make sure that that's active. Same over here, we're going to do the same thing. 109.5, make sure it's active. So yeah, uh, also if you're doing a that's in flight or pilot edge, basically multiplayer flight, you're going to have to put your transponder on so they can see you on the radar. So basically, it's on standby right now. Now, altitude off, no. Altitude on, no. TA, no. TARA is correct. Basically shows them all the data they need. So basically, you're going to go ahead and set your um, squawk code. So we're just going to squawk 7700 because, uh, you know, we have an engine failed. Wink, wink, we have an emergency. Then they're going to ask you to ident basically gives them a wave, basically makes it so that they can uh, actually see all your data, so just click ident. That's it. So, uh, hope you have a good one. See you later, man.